This is Hawked. It's the newest cartoon art style extraction shooter, and honestly, it kind of reminds me of Fortnite's golden age, and I'm not talking about modern current Fortnite, I'm talking like OG season 3 Fortnite. And if you never played, that's okay, stick around, because this is definitely not Fortnite. However, Hawked is free. How's it going, everybody? My name is Magneti, and I welcome you to The Mothership, where I introduce new games to modern classic gamers like you and myself, and provide tips and tricks on how to better enjoy today's video games. Let's talk about Hawked. So first off, I want to introduce Hawked and how it's different from other extraction shooters. The key differences from Hawked compared to games like Escape from Tarkov, Marauders, or even The Cycle Frontier is, up front and foremost, the art style is a lot different than any other extraction shooter that's out right now. It's kind of similar to the Cycle Frontier, but it has a very cartoon art style, very similar to Fortnite. Now, the objectives are entirely different in this extraction shooter. Hawked does not revolve around gear extracting. It revolves around, like, artifacts and trinkets and stuff like that, so there's no gear fear involved. So to briefly describe the objectives and the mechanics, it's a treasure hunting extraction shooter. The locomotion is completely different from a lot of the games that I've played, and it really looks a lot like modern Fortnite. And there's also something called the Traverser, which is basically a tool that you receive upon starting the game that you can activate to latch on to cliffs or swing or bounce and use different types of movement in the game to provide launching or grappling and stuff like that. Everything is very smooth, and for a beta game, I cannot believe how well-rounded out this game is overall. Now let's talk about the gameplay mechanics and the core gameplay loop. So, there is only trios right now, however they are working on implementing a solo game mode, and I would presume they're probably working on putting in squads as well. But the overall core gameplay loop of Hawked, it's a treasure hunting game. Like I said before, you're going to be seeking out artifacts, trinkets. You're going to get these artifacts through caravans or a treasure room. And it's all very unique compared to any of the other extraction shooters that I've played. Now, Hawked really blends the Battle Royale style looting dynamic with the extraction shooter dynamic. So it's very, very much Battle Royale. When you drop in, you have to loot up, find gear and equipment. There is a select handful of things that you loot up or equip in the hub, but the guns and that type of stuff you will be finding in the game in each individual match. Mixing this Battle Royale style looting system with the extraction loot pickup type system, I, I don't even know how to describe it, but it it's just a very unique blend that I've come to really enjoy in this game. Now I do want to talk a little bit about character creation as well because this is another separating factor from the game that I have never really seen in this type of game. You can completely customize your own character from skin color, hair type, facial structure. You can't get into the nitty gritty like RPG games when it comes to facial structure, but you can change your hair color, you can change your clothes, and there is a lot of other cosmetics as well that you can purchase or get in a battle pass that adjust the way that your player looks as well, so there are still in-game cosmetics. However, you do have huge customizability within your character creation, which is awesome. I love that. Now let's talk about some of the hub interactions. So the central hub has a lot of, or a handful, of interactive elements. It has the firing range, uh, traverser or locomotion practice, as well as different merchants and stuff like that, which I'll touch on in a moment. So in the hub, you'll find that it's a very sci-fi, kind of modernized, it almost looks like a spaceship. You've got some space to run around. You can practice with your traverser and practice different locomotion movements. You can go to like your private room, which there isn't really much in there yet. They have a firing range as well. And I know they used to have a leaderboard. I don't know if it's still there or not. I'll show you up on screen. So the firing range is awesome because it has every gun in the game in there. Every type of equipment, every grenade, every health pickup has all the ammo. It's a pretty decent sized firing range. I would love to see a more interactive PvE type firing range where we can practice different types of artifacts and gear and exos and wards and boosters as well which I'll get into all later but I would love to just see that in the firing range so that way we can practice different gameplay styles and different mechanics. So now there is a presence of factions and merchants or other NPCs within the hub. It's still being developed. Specifically, the factions are mostly being developed. However, you do have a primary merchant that you can interact with, and then you have three other NPCs that you can interact with, which every time you finish a match and talk to them, it will give you faction XP, which hasn't really been built upon yet to my knowledge. However, it's pretty clear that they're looking to create a faction growth type system because there is one faction that you can grow respect with. 
Now there is only one merchant in the hub as of right now. However, that merchant will sell you everything you need. It'll sell you the gear, which is exos and wards. You can sell your trinkets and artifacts there, and you can upgrade your respect or level of trust with the one and only faction which unlocks more gear that you can, can buy. So now speaking of gear, let's move into talking about gear and enhancements. Now we're not gonna talk about artifacts here quite yet. So what is gear? Gear is just the stuff that you can buy in the hub and equip on your character. They call them exos and ward gear. So exo gear is gonna be one type of gear and then the ward gear is gonna be the other type of gear. The ward is more of a personal effect that you can use for yourself and the exo gear is gonna be more of like an offensive or or team attack kind of based piece of equipment. So as of the recording of this video, there is currently only four exos and four wards. Now you can only have one ward and one exo equipped. For the exos, we've got the recon raptor, which basically you launch out a raptor that recons the area for enemies and loot. You've got gelatinium or gelatinum. I'm not really sure how to say that, which is basically a nice jello wall, which has a durability that has to be destroyed before it can be shot through or a time limit. And it also damages enemies. At least it damaged me. I'm pretty sure when I walked through it once, I could be wrong. You have the kickback coin, which is basically a coin you throw up in the air. It lasts for a duration of time and you can shoot at it and it ricochets bullets to the nearest enemy. And you have the cohort's kite which links you to a selected ally and basically shares your health with that ally so if you take damage it keeps you at an even health if that makes sense for the wards we've got the boom box which basically makes you run faster for eight seconds the next ward we have is the shock rocker it damages all enemies within a six meter range the further enemies are away from you the less damage it does the next one is going to be the familiar's boon which it says it grants you an overcharge buff i would presume that means a either a speed buff or a health buff I haven't gotten the chance to use this yet, so I'm not entirely sure. And the last ward we have is the Fringe Fader, which basically makes you invisible for eight seconds as long as you don't do anything like sprinting, rolling, or any combat actions. Now, depending on which exo or ward you equip in your loadout will depend on how you kind of play the game. It'll affect your gameplay and the strategy you apply in a match will adjust, especially depending on how your trio is equipped as well. So, for example, if all three of you have completely different exos and wards, you will all play very differently. Now, the exos and wards that I mentioned previously were just the ones that are purchasable in the shop. There are the starter exos and wards, which I believe the two wards that you start with are like a little health flask which gives you 50 health damn near instantaneously and it can be used while sprinting and the secondary ward is like an ammo drop you can call in a almost like a care package and it drops ammo for you the two exos that you can start out with are a boomerang or fireflies the boomerang hits an enemy and bounces back to you up to two enemies at a time and the fireflies launches out three fireflies that launch into a direction and mildly lock onto enemies and start them on fire now you can put yourself out using an extinguisher so personally that one's it's good but it's not the greatest anyways moving into artifacts and trinkets so artifacts also will adjust your gameplay style because they give you a lot of different effects for example i currently have on my character on my loadout i have a collar of scorn which is a starting artifact an elder's mask and an ambusher now all three of these do something completely different and there are a lot of different artifacts i have not gotten the chance to even get remotely close to all of the artifacts and test them all out but there are a lot of different options just as an example, my personal favorite right now is the ambusher artifact because when you crouch for two and a half seconds, I've upgraded mine so the time is reduced a little bit, it disguises you as a bush. And if you upgrade this to legendary quality, it will also make you invisible inside the bush. Now the bush disappears if you stand up or perform any combat actions or sprint or roll. And also it can be kind of confusing when you're kind of crouched behind cover trying to hide from somebody and boom, randomly a bush pops up. Now you're pretty much a given target. So these things are really honestly, in my opinion, what make Hawked different than the other extraction shooters. I didn't really even get into boosters because they don't really have a whole lot of them right now, but boosters are one of the only things that you can lose upon dying or not extracting in a match of Hawked. Boosters give you small different little effects that affect your character in each individual match. And if you die, you lose them, but you can charge them up to five and they only cost 450 units, which is really easy to get. Now, how do you obtain artifacts in Hawked? So it's actually pretty simple. You have to either one, collect 
five glyphs by solving puzzles or killing PvE enemies, and then you collect the glyph. Or you can hunt down caravans and collect the artifacts directly from destroying a caravan. There are two caravans per match and one treasure room per match. So once you get five glyphs or once one team gets five glyphs and unlocks the treasure room, they can collect the artifact. Now, once you collect an artifact, every player will know in the match that you have an artifact and you will be marked on the map. So you need to be cautious when you collect an artifact and you need to immediately go extract in the game. Now, what's awesome about Hawked as well is that when you extract, you can continue to play. So say, for example, you find a caravan, you get looted up, you find a lot of good gear, you find a caravan, you immediately kill the caravan, you've killed like two or three squads, and you go and extract with your artifacts and your trinkets, you can continue playing and you can go get the next caravan or you could go to the treasure room or you could kill a squad that has an artifact. It's almost endless per match. Obviously, there's only three artifacts per game, but it's awesome that you can extract and continue playing and you don't lose any thing. You just extract your trinkets and artifacts. So what are trinkets? I've been talking about these a lot and I haven't really said what they are. Trinkets are the main source of income for your player in the game. They're basically exactly what it sounds like. They're little trinkets in the game that you can run around and collect. And then you can only carry up to two trinkets, I believe. And if you have one of a higher rarity than another one that's on the ground, you cannot pick the one on the ground up. So it only lets you sell the best quality trinkets in the game or extract with them at least. And you can depending on the rarity of the trinket, you can either deconstruct it at the grail merchant in the hub, or you can just sell it. Now, deconstructing it or extracting it or whatever will give you a different currency that you need to upgrade your artifacts. So it's pretty useful to keep in mind both of your currency levels so that you know, okay, I need X amount to upgrade this artifact, for example. Now, something else I didn't really go into a whole lot in the beginning, which I would have wanted to touch on, is that the setting of the game. So basically, the main story is that you're going on to an ancient island that was taken over by these animal people and they have leftover artifacts and trinkets on there and you, you're basically you're a, a pirate renegade trying to pick up all these items and sell them and it's a pretty bare bones story as of right now but I'm sure that the developers are going to work on making the story a little more rounded out. So in conclusion my overall opinion about this game I honestly think that there's a lot of potential for this game and if the developers do it right they can be the next big hit honestly it's very appealing to younger people and you know obviously this channel is for modern classic gamers so i think it's very appealing to the golden age of fortnite which was personally one of my i would say maybe top 10 it was probably 10th on my top 10 list of best games of all time golden age fortnite fortnite now i'm not a big fan of anyways not to get into it Overall, I think Hawked is a fantastic game. I do want to let you know, though, if you do get into it, it is going to take some time to get into it. There's a lot of little nuances to learn. The locomotion is a little different from a lot of the different games that I've played. But overall, if you take your time and give it like one to two hours, about five to ten matches of Hawked, and I personally think you would love this game. Other than that, stay tuned for more gaming content, and we'll talk again real soon. Peace!